Hey everyone, Matt Dean, producer and director of Old Man in the Sea, Return to Cuba. We have had such a wonderful response on our feature-length documentary that we have here on our YouTube channel that we've decided to release some additional interview footage with Finbar Gittleman, along with some stills that we took along the way to our Cuba trip. So we're going to have this in multiple parts as there's a bunch of footage that we weren't able to use in the film, but some great stories and some wonderful insights into the sailing life. So let's get started. I am Finbar Gittleman. I am three quarters of a century old. And I am an admiral. Conk Republic Navy. I'm Supreme Commander of Conk Republic Military Forces and First Sea Lord. Also Ambassador to Pitcairn, Ambassador to Rapa Nui, and Ambassador to the Maritime Republic of Eastport. We talked a little bit last time about your first time getting out on the ocean. What does the sea mean to you? It's my home. It's, it's where I live, it's where I travel, it's what I do. Um, I've, I've been working on the sea since I'm, uh, since my uh, teenage years and uh, I've done damn near everything you can do on the sea at one time or another. I've worked on merchant ships and Coast Guard cutters and uh, I even did a trip on a shrimper one time. <laughs> one time. <laughs> Let's imagine someone who's never been able to be a part of that. How would you describe the sea to them? It's great and vast and beautiful and scary sometimes. Sometimes very scary. It'll put you to the challenge. It will do that. I, I don't remember who said it, but... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll copy it. Uh, the sea is a harsh mistress sometimes, and sometimes she's a warm and beautiful and loving mistress. Is it a good way to make a living? Has it been difficult? Well, for me, there's no other way to do things because that's what I am, but uh, it's, it's, it depends what you're doing. Sometimes it can be very lucrative. <clears throat> sometimes you work for uh very minimal wages depends what you're doing what kind of ship you're on what kind of uh, sailors as a rule don't make the money that they should for what they do it's not one of the it's generally not one of the higher paying uh professions uh <clears throat> but you can make a living of it and uh you can get what you need from it I've heard that old school sailing is, is dying out, that there's not as many people. No, it's not that. dying out. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there are some of us that are still very much into the old traditions and doing things the old way. Uh, I mean, for example, now you have all this super high-tech navigation gear, all these navigation systems and uh, GPS and all this. Well, that's all well and good, and I use it. But if that stuff breaks, I'm not lost. I've, I've taught quite a few people what, what we call Stone Age navigation because, you know, they have all the electronic stuff, but... That stuff can break in a heartbeat. It can just go away. And people who have learned to navigate strictly that way uh, are at a loss when it breaks. I'm not going to start claiming that I have all this knowledge that nobody else does, because it's not so. I'm just a regular old sailor. But I have a lot of years doing it. I've seen a lot of stuff gone through a lot of stuff, uh, even gone through stuff that we hope most sailors don't ever have to go through. But I've learned from all of that. And what I have learned, I, I very much like to pass on to my shipmates. 
everything from how to tie a proper knot to uh, learning how to navigate the old way and uh, how to deal with emergency situations. You said uh, the other day that you'd learned a lot from, was it? Oh, we were talking about Captain Riley. Captain Riley, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he taught me a whole lot. Well, my first real learning was in the Coast Guard. Okay. Because uh, up till then, I had been sailing around Biscayne Bay in little skiffs and dinghies and whatever, and, uh, you know, I, I was... I learned what a kid learns by doing it by yourself. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have anybody in my family to teach me any of that. I don't have. I don't come from a seafaring family. So I kind of, as a kid, I learned what I could from whoever I could, you know, and most of it by myself. Uh, you try this and it doesn't work. You try that and it works. And, you know, trial and error. And I taught myself a, you know, a bunch of stuff that way. But when I graduated high school, I went and enlisted in the Coast Guard. And you can't ask for a better education if you're going to go to sea for a living, make a profession out of it. You can't ask for a better education than a hitch in the Coast Guard. Uh, you learn the right way to do stuff. And, and that was my first real learning. When I got out of that, I started sailing in merchant ships. And one of the first ships I got on was an old Bahamian freighter. And the captain was a, a grisly old black man. It was old Captain Riley. Uh, I'm going to guess he was in his mid to late 80s. And he, he was, uh, I could only hope to be as, as, as fit and as alert and as smart as that old man. And, of course, everything in those days was pretty low-tech. And all we had for navigation equipment on that ship was a magnetic compass and a clock. <laughs> and that's what we had, and that's what we navigated with. Uh, but that old man, he, he, knew, he knew his way around the Bahamas like uh, nobody I've ever known. And one day, I asked him, I said, because we used to take that ship into places I didn't believe you could take a ship that size into. And uh, one day I said to him, I said, Captain Riley, I bet you know where every rock and reef and sandbar in the Bahamas is. And he looked at me this way and that way, and he scratched his head, and he said, well, no, but I know where they ain't. He ran his ship on pure instinct. I mean, he just knew what was right and what was wrong and 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 he knew how to handle a ship and a crew like uh oh, i don't know if i've ever known anybody was that good at it uh, and, and i had tremendous respect for this old man and i learned i learned a whole lot from him what's one thing you would tell someone coming on as a first time crew member is it something you say when someone first steps on the deck and said here's what you need to watch out for here's who you need to Oh, sure, sure. I'm always, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm always learning and I'm always teaching because I've been out there longer than most folks and I probably know a little more about it than most folks and I try very hard to pass, pass on my knowledge and my skills. I try to pass that on to my crew. Uh, and uh, safety is a big, huge part of it. You know, any, anybody can just drive the boat, but and a big part of safety is not not what you do when it hits the fan, but how to prevent those things from happening in the first place. That's a big part of safety. Uh, so you're always you're always watching things, and the more you know, the more you see. Uh, when something's wrong, you see it, and sometimes sometimes you feel it, even when you don't see anything wrong. Uh, sometimes you feel something ain't quite right. And I've learned to trust those feelings, trust those instincts. If you don't feel it's quite right, then it probably isn't. Something's, something needs to be done somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So where has the sea taken you over the years? I've been all over the U.S. East Coast and the Gulf, uh, Bahamas, all over the Caribbean, South America, uh, both east and west coasts. Uh, uh, 
I've been across the Pacific a couple of times, and I've been one trip across to Europe, and the only place in Europe I ever was was in Scotland, but uh, that's, that's about where I've been. Where's been your favorite place? Oh, been? I'm going to, outside of Key West, I'm going to say my favorite place is the Bahamas and Jamaica. What is it about those places that's, that's special? Just, just the beauty of it, the way of life uh, suits me perfectly. It runs at the right speed. Uh, the waters, well, the waters in the Bahamas are, you can't beat them wherever you go. And uh, in Jamaica, you got everything. You got the beaches to the mountains and everything in between. Costa Rica's like that too. Just the people, the way of life, it's all good. What does it mean to be a sailor? Well, it's a hard thing to say. Uh, maybe if I were more eloquent, I'd come up with some better words, but to me, I guess, being a sailor is being a part of that part of nature, the, the, the sea and, the, and the, the winds and the waves, those are elemental forces. Uh, and being a sailor being a real sailor is living with those forces day in and day out and being tuned to them so that you feel them on a deep down elemental gut kind of way and that's what you live with from day to day from hour to hour minute to minute that's what you live with and it becomes part of you a sailor in a sense is a sea creature it's a creature of the sea as well, you know, and, and some sailors are a little clumsy on, on shore, like me, for example. I, 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 feel, I feel much more uh, able and capable when I'm at sea than I do when I go ashore, because when I go ashore, to, I, all kinds of things I run into that I don't necessarily understand and it's hard to deal with. Uh, at sea, I don't... I don't have that. Sometimes it's hard to deal with, but never it's anything I don't understand. Out there, I understand all of it. Running down to Cuba, we are bound away. Wavy boys to Cuba. To Cuba's coast at the breaking of day. Running down to Cuba. Most folks go through a, a period during their childhood and their adolescence where they have to, I guess the expression is, find yourself. And I never had to go through that because I sort of was always aware of what I am. Oh, we'd be all right if the wind were in our sails. thy captain, there be no higher authority aboard this ship. Thou shalt not disobey my order, thou shalt not tell me bullshit, thou shalt not lose thy cool. The most difficult thing is when things get really dangerous, which they can. We got caught in the hurricane, category five, and we fought a hell of a fight to keep her afloat. And when I knew we were losing the fight, I had to order a bounding ship. Some of my earliest memories are in Cuba. Just like you remember? Is it? This is. I was there during the Mario boat lift 
There must have been well over a thousand boats anchored in Mario Harbor. Colonel says to me, Captain, you have a big boat. I need your big boat. And then very slowly, he reaches down and he pulls out his piece, a GI-45, and he lays it on the desk. I said, this, this son of a wants to be dramatic, well, I'll show him some drama. Oh,